Hi, I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. A lot of you have been messaging of late that, Luke, I have a problem with anxiety. I want to reduce my anxiety. I try meditation, I try sitting in silence, I try working out, and it gets me short-term results. We should understand straight up that medica medica uh, meditation isn't always going to take your problems away. It helps us to ground ourselves so we can mindfully see why we get anxious. Number one, we need to change our mindset to anxiety. What I'm going to do on today's video is teach you a simple exercise how you can not get rid of your problems, but you can over, um, overcome anxiety. If you're feeling really anxious or you're feeling really stressed out, how can you change that within one to two minutes? And I'm gonna teach this exercise to you. I think I've done a video like this a couple of months ago. I'm gonna do it again today because we forget to practice the easiest and the simplest things. Number one, change your mindset towards anxiety. Don't make anxiety negative. Anxiety is part of every human being. It's a survival mechanism. Anxiety warns us of some potential threat. It, in, it warns us about something that may not go too well, so it allows us time to prepare. But most of us get stuck in anxiety. We stay victims that we don't move to action. Anxiety is a warning signal, a warning signal that, hey, listen, you know, COVID is spreading. Example, hey, listen, you're not feeling well. Your child has come home late from school. You know, all of these things, they're just signals. So never look at anxiety as a negative uh, issue because it's part of every human being. We need it for survival. It's a survival mechanism, okay? If you don't get anxious, you can't move to the right action. But the problem is most of us become slaves to anxiety, and that becomes a problem. When your anxiety is chronic, okay, cortisol goes up, es uh, cortisol goes up, adrenaline goes up, our hormones start to change, testosterone comes down, estrogen moves up, progesterone comes down, and we have a hormonal imbalance, your blood pressure, your blood sugar levels, cholesterol, everything. You know the story. My point is, what can we do to relax? Everyone has problems, except that, number one. Number two, if you think, no matter how much you meditate, no matter what you do, that your life is gonna be free of problems, change your mindset, okay? We have to face life knowing that there can be problems and there can be no problems. There can be good times and there can be bad times. The point is, everyone only thinks that we should be happy all the time and peaceful all the time. It's impossible. But it's possible when you learn how to find peace and happiness even amidst your lowest moments or when things are not going too well for you. So we're gonna learn a simple exercise right now. The warnings first. If you have vertigo, okay, if you are on very, very strong antidepressants or antipsychotic drugs, you may not wanna do this right now and you may wanna to speak to your professional. This exercise works on the science of stimulating your vagus nerve. It's not my exercise, I've learned it and I'm sharing it. It's what we teach our, teach our patients around the world. It's a simple exercise, but I can guarantee you, when you do it the right way, it can give you so much of calmness, so much of calmness, and you're gonna feel it right today when we do it. Do it with an open mind. When you do this exercise, you don't have to worry about thoughts popping up in your mind. If it happens, just come back to the exercise, okay? Don't make a big deal about your mind wandering around and all of that stuff. The point is as you practice it, you get better and better. Two, I've had about three patients across the globe who came back saying that, Luke, when I did this exercise, I couldn't handle it. I said, what couldn't you handle? They said, I couldn't handle the calmness because I'm a hyper person all the time. And when this exercise put me into calmness, I couldn't handle it and I had to open my eyes and I, I, I needed to get hyper again because they all their nature is to be hyper. If your nature is to be hyper all the time, sometimes calm can scare you. Calm can scare you. The same way silence can be deafening for some people, calm can also scare people who are hyper. But the point is practice, practice, practice. There is no negative side effect of the exercise that we're gonna do. The simple science is that this exercise helps you to stimulate the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve, when stimulated, moves you from stress to de-stress. Sympathetic nervous system to parasympathetic nervous system. Anxiety to calmness. So let's get straight into the exercise. You can sit cross-legged, you can sit on a chair like I am. Try to keep your back straight whenever you're doing these kind of exercises. Now, the whole idea is there are many ways of doing this exercise. We're gonna do one technique today. All you need to do is follow the instructions. You can do it with me, but then I want you to practice this later. This exercise is fantastic just before you sleep, especially if you have a problem sleeping because this puts you into such a deep calmness. Now, once I finish the exercise, it's very important for you to follow the breathing technique and then just keep your eyes closed. 
Okay, we're gonna go through this. If you don't like it or you're feeling weird, just open up your eyes. It's as simple as that. No need to judge it. No need to make your mind up about something and stuff. Keep an open mind. It's as simple as that. So sit with your back straight, clasp your hands together, and just gently hold it behind your head. Okay, don't try to bring it down to your neck, just behind your head. If it comes up, it's fine. It's a little lower, that's fine. Okay, you don't wanna push your head in the front. It's just like a light support, that's all. The back of your head is cradled in your clasped hands. Now watch me very carefully. I look in front, okay? I'm breathing normally. With my left eye, I'm gonna look upwards in the corner. As I do this, I'm gonna feel a little bit of pressure and stretch over here and over here. It's gonna happen naturally. It's not a competition, so don't try to look too far. Just a slight angle, move your left eye upwards towards the upper left corner. And we're gonna hold this for 30 seconds. Okay, don't move your head, only your eyes move. If you're feeling the strain, you can relax a little bit. The strain is nothing but your muscle, your eye muscle, moving in that direction. It'll pull on the other one as well. We try to hold this for 30 seconds. If you gotta blink your eyes, that's okay. Eventually, we wanna to try to do it without blinking our eyes, but it still works even if you have to blink your eyes. So we're holding it for 15 seconds more without moving your head, gently looking up, your head cradled in the clasp of your hands. As it gets easier, you can try to look higher and higher, but towards the left upper uh, corner. Okay, that's 30 seconds. Now I look in front and I do the same exercise on the other side. Without moving my head, right eye upwards towards the right corner. May look a little weird, but the feeling is worth it. You won't be feeling anything right now except the strain, the calmness is soon gonna come. Gotta wait patiently for calmness. And you can just keep breathing, normal breathing. Inhale and exhale. Hold for another 15 seconds. Ten, six, two, one. Look in front, close your eyes, and put your hands on your lap. Palms facing upwards, bend your head a little lower, and now just breathe. Slow, deep inhales. As you inhale, your belly rises. As you exhale, your belly deflates like a balloon. You're gonna feel some heaviness in your eyes, a beautiful heaviness as they relax. They were tensed while you were holding that position contracted. When a muscle contracts, it has to relax. And now just focus on your breathing. Some of you may feel heaviness in your head, in your eyes, and you'll feel a nice light calmness in your overall head. The idea is to sit in silence and just follow your breath. Follow the inhale, follow the exhale. Doesn't matter if it's short, doesn't matter if it's long, but make sure on every inhale the belly rises and every exhale the belly deflates like a balloon. That's belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, one of the most powerful ways and natural ways to breathe. Your head may lower a little bit. That's up to you, keep your back straight. Let all thoughts come to your mind, don't worry about it, come back to the breath. Now you can go on sitting in this position. As you do this more and more, it is so addictive. You won't wanna come out of it. And when you come out of it, try not to jump back into work immediately. Even when you open your eyes, you'll just be like, this calmness in your head. This calmness in your head. You've stimulated your vagus nerve. And this is a beautiful entry point for meditation as well. Because once that calmness settles and you're focused on your breath, guess what? You're meditating. It's as simple as that. Try this before you sleep. You can do this any time in the day. Preferably do not do this before driving. Do not do this before driving. Don't do it yeah, when, before you drive. Okay, and like I said, if you're on heavy antidepressants medication that's already kind of, you know, uh, keeping you a little bit, uh, your emotions calm, this may overwhelm you a little bit. It's not gonna destroy you, so try it. Suits you, do it. Doesn't suit you, don't do it. Don't make it more complicated than that. If it suits you, do it. Doesn't suit you, do not do it. Once you start doing this practice a little more, I'll show you technique number two and then technique number three. It revolves around the same science of stimulating the vagus nerve. 
And this is how simple it is. Okay, I can still feel that, you know, calmness in my face, my eyes. I want to close my eyes, but I want to say bye to you as well and tell you to have a great weekend. Uh, practice makes you perfect. This may not work the first. It always works the first, the second, the third, fourth. But the more you do it, I can, I can promise you, I'll give you one of my own experiences. I can't meditate for more than 30 minutes. I can do 30 minutes beautifully. But when I do this and I move into a meditation, 40, 45 minutes, and I don't want to come out of it. I don't know if I'm meditating. I, don't, I know I'm just calm. And that beauty, that beautiful calm that you feel is what you let slip into your day. You allow that calmness to slip into your day. By doing this technique, you're, it's not going to take away your problems. It's going to teach you to manage your problems better because you become more mindful, more grounded, so you can pause before you react, you can pause before you respond. And uh, let's say you practice and you still get angry. You don't blame the technique, okay? You don't blame anything. You keep practicing until you get perfect. Have a great weekend, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you. I want you to practice this and I want you to share your feedback with me on how this makes you feel. It's one of the most beautiful, beautiful things that you can do. Okay, even patients who have Alzheimer's, patients who have Parkinson's, dementia, they can do this. If they can't hold it for 30 seconds, hold it for 10 seconds. That's even fine. Stimulate, close your eyes, breathe. The simplest things. All the power of this is coming from within you. Remember, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of hell is within all of us. Have a great day, everyone.